<laughs> hey guys, we're back. And today we are once again going to wade into the calm and healing waters of the Lifetime Network. That's right. Today we're going to be taking a look at Stock by My Doctor Part 3, Patient's Revenge. The film opens with a nice little sizzle reel to catch the viewers up to speed. We pick back up with Sophie from the first film. Still laboring under the trauma of the assault inflicted on her at the Bengay slathered hands of the ghoulish Dr. Beck. Okay. Ugh. She still can't get the taste of fixident out of her mouth. After that, we head over to Casa de Pervert, where we find Dr. Beck in bed with an unsuspecting new lady friend. Mm. I really want this to work. Oh, I do too. This feels like a Cialis commercial. There are some things in my past that you don't know about. And I'm sure there are things about you that I don't know about, right? Right. to send me to jail for a long time, but I managed to persuade one of the jurors to see it my way, and she convinced everybody else. The court finds Dr. Albert Beck not guilty. Are you kidding me? The criminal justice system has failed us once again. What did they accuse you of? It's, it's not important, baby. Hey, come on. No secrets, remember? Kidnapping and attempted murder. Yeah, just some light kidnapping. Melted a guy in a bathtub. You know, nothing major. Well, it was complicated. Yeah, I figured the life of a sick, twisted pervert would get pretty complicated from time to time. Like I said, it was all just a big misunderstanding. Yeah, sure. That's one way to put it, pal. I'm certain she'll understand. They are in love, after all. <laughs> How in the hell did he do that? Ah, uh, just as I feared. We have a teleporting pervert on our hands. No, you won't. She deserves it. We're then introduced to Albert Durden, a product of Dr. Beck's fractured psyche. Dude, you need to take your pill. I love her. Pill. He usually has to hide it in a piece of cheese to get him to eat it. <laughs> His VH1 reality show, Stalked by Love, never really took off. With his reputation in shambles, and no foreseeable employment options, Albert knows there's only one place left to go. Arizona State University, where even a creep like Dr. Beck can get a job. We then cut back to Sophie, who's now sporting a Wednesday Addams haircut as she prepares to head off to college. With revenge on her mind, she decides to go full Kill Bill on Dr. Beck. That's how his mom always signs his birthday cards. Meanwhile, Dr. Beck is up to his same old shenanigans. He's hallucinating that he's in a David Lee Roth video. After he snaps out of his perverted fever dream, things get even more awkward. Yes. Did you kidnap that girl? What's her name? Victoria. 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 If what you read on the internet were true, do you think this great university would have hired me? 
Probably not. Of course not. Well, I guess that settles it, huh? We're then treated to a vomit-inducing meat cute between Albert and his newest victim. I'm so sorry I'm late. I ran all the way from the... <laughs> oh, easy. Okay, don't worry, she just fainted. Has this ever happened to you before? Like when you stand up too fast or you get grossed out? Or catch a whiff of an old man's cologne? It sounds like she has vasovagal syncope. When the vagus nerve is overstimulated, your blood vessels dilate. I don't know about you, but I didn't understand one <laughs> word he just said. God, I'm so embarrassed. Uh, don't be. Oh boy, you know where this is going. Yep, I knew it. Luckily, Albert Durden shows up to admonish Dr. Beck for his perverted ways. Man, you really think you could be normal, don't you? Well, I wouldn't aim that high, but... Shut up and leave me alone. I'm not gonna leave you alone. Because you got a big-ass problem and you don't see it. You've got at least two more sequels after this, pal. Younger women? They're poison to you. Well, then how come, how come they're so much nicer to me than older women? Because you're so old that younger women think you're harmless. They don't know you're just really a dirty old man. And stay away from her, man. Stay away from all women. It's the only way you're gonna keep out of trouble, pal. So what am I supposed to do? Live the rest of my life alone? With no one to love? That's the deal. Well, the deal stinks. It stinks. It beats the hell out of prison. He's so proud of himself. Now he's gonna go tell all the other pervs what a great job he did today. Apparently, Dr. Beck's new crush, Melissa, suffered some sort of brain damage after her fainting spell because she starts coming on to the old pervert. Later that night, Sophie breaks into Dr. Beck's classroom and plays a little prank on him. Pass him around. I know it's a bit old school, but when you take notes this way, the information has a way of sticking to the brain cells, which is the whole point, right? Heyo! Still, this is pretty far down the list of most embarrassing things that have ever happened to Dr. Beck. And then, in a thrilling showdown, the Hot Topic Avenger engages in battle with Dr. Pervert. I don't think anybody's gonna argue with him. Stay away from me. Thought you were going to Wittendale. Looks like they both had to settle for Arizona State. But it seems pepper spray is no match for the seasoned pervert. This man kidnapped me. He tried to kill me. That's not true. Trying to interest more people in your fake lawsuit? That trial was a joke. Whose life are you going to try to ruin next time? One of your teachers? Your dentist? Ooh, I hope they're planning a Stock by My Dentist spinoff series. When public shaming doesn't work, Sophie decides to hire a crackhead to beat the dog out of the old pervert. Yeah, just rough him up a little bit. Now send him a message. Hey, Dr. Kidnapper! Time for some good old-fashioned elder abuse. No. So anyways, after getting a face full of Yeezys, courtesy of the unruly teens, Melissa helps Dr. Beck tend to his wounds. Then a budding romance begins to blossom between the two, and it's not weird or disgusting at all. And then, because the director had recently seen La La Land, we're subjected to this nonsense. Dances down you long hair that sparkle in your eyes just makes me stop and stare. That's right. They put a musical number in this movie about a psychotic pervert. What will Lifetime think of next? Yes, he might be an irredeemable creep, but have you seen him dance? But unfortunately, Albert's hoofing skills aren't enough to impress the dean of ASU, and he is swiftly fired. What happened? They, uh... They let me go. <laughs> they have a strict no singing and dancing with students policy. After a rough day, nothing lifts your spirits quite like a trip to the Olive Garden. After enjoying some complimentary breadsticks, the pair heads back to Dr. Beck's McMansion of Terrors. Apparently the Spanish fly that Dr. Beck put in Melissa's drink is starting to kick in because she puts the moves on the old man. That's it. How much you love me. <sighs> he likes to watch. Don't worry. I won't subject you to what happens next. But the next morning, Dr. Beck's post-coital glee is cut short. He usually has to pay for this kind of thing. 
I feel this morning, Albert. I'm not doing very well. <laughs> you have to help. What's that? You need to help me. Looks like the hot topic Avenger has the upper hand now. Mm. Don't hurt me. Maybe a little physical therapy might help. Ooh, right in the old swizzle stick. We're gonna remove it. Before Sophie can remove little Albert, Melissa swoops in to save the day. She's gonna kill you, just like you tried to kill me. But the Hot Topic Avenger manages to make a daring escape in her mother's Nissan Versa. Later, the police stop by to investigate. You're impatient of mine. The same Sophie Green who accused you of kidnapping and attempted murder. I see you did your homework on me, didn't you? Sure did. Sophie refuses to accept the jury's decision. She's crazy. Are you going to arrest Sophie Green or what? Uh, maybe later. Well, witnesses, Dr. Beck, who can corroborate her alibi. You're kidding me. And you believed him? You believe her over the filthy pervert? Why, that's just crazy. No word against theirs. Thanks a lot, Detective. You guys are the best. Oh, thanks. Hey, wait a second. Dylan. According to Sophie's roommates, she went home to California right after she was expelled. What? Yeah, and Sophie's parents were in L.A. are saying she was with them this morning. It sounds like she's everywhere. This is Dr. Beck. Hi, Dr. Beck. It's good to hear from you again. Naturally, Albert puts his girlfriend on the phone to do all the tough talking. Okay, you want to hurt Albert? You're going to have to go through me. You stand by that creep? And you're gonna die right along with them. So then the two have a glass of warm milk and head off to bed. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Is Olive Garden even open this late? I don't know. What are you thinking? We have to kill her. Jesus, slow down there, Eileen Wernos. We are gonna do this. And so the twisted pair set out to take down Sophie. What the hell? Melissa, what are you doing? Forgive me. Help! Oh. I didn't think you were actually serious, Jesus. And if it wasn't ridiculous enough yet, whoa, 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 whoa. Sophie's car is destroyed by bad CGI. Once LA County firefighters arrived on scene, they discovered Miss Green's car completely engulfed in flames. Later, the police stopped by to ask a few more questions. If I remember correctly, at your trial, didn't Sophie Green say that you tried to fake her death by setting her car on fire? I'm sorry, you'll have to be more specific. Just weren't true. Yes, but what a coincidence. I mean, first you're accused of faking her death by lighting her car on fire. And then just last Tuesday night, Sophie is murdered. For real this time and her car goes up in flames. What are the odds? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Jeez, maybe one in a billion. <laughs> Derp. And then in a twist that surprises absolutely no one, we find out that Melissa has been playing Albert all along. Oh my God. Melissa, why did you do this? Wait, did I do this? <laughs> Dr. Albert Beck, you're under arrest. And you're under anesthesia. You okay? I don't know. Go after him. I'll call for backup. Jesus, does he just walk around with pockets full of syringes ready to go? Sorry, I just found that amusing. Why does she do that to me? Why, why, why? Call yourself. And then in yet another shocking twist, we find out that Melissa and Sophie were in cahoots all along. And you are gonna look awesome. Thank you for letting me stay here. Yeah, of course, anytime. But little do they know that Dr. Beck has used his superior creeping skills to track them down. Duh. Sophie Green is dead. Now she goes by Marsha Brady. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. <laughs> the perv disapproves. I'm not gonna lie, I am 
You know, I understand why Sophie hates me. Oh, you were finally able to wrap your head around that one, huh? Why'd you do it? Answer me! Or she dies. Sophie and I... Sophie and I have been best friends since we were six years old. And even though my family left L.A. when I started high school... I've always considered her my sister. I'm sorry, can we get the longer, more convoluted version? Like a bomb. It's actually too easy. I got a cadaver from the anatomy lab at the medical school. I don't know. This is starting to sound like the plot to a bad Lifetime movie. Wait a second. She sent the bomb to blow. Melissa, what are you doing here? Forgive me. Sophie pressed her car alarm and that was my cue to shoot the gas tank. And you did all this because she is your best friend. Yes, you idiot. Didn't you listen to anything that she just told you? So anyways, Albert gets the upper hand. Does this rag smell funny to you? Then, Dr. Beck decides to do a little elective surgery on Melissa and Sophie like some sort of perverted Dr. Frankenstein. Look at him, just cheesing like a dip. Welcome to Cardiological Systems 101B. I am Dr. Albert Beck, and today, we will be performing a double open heart transplant. Let's talk about why these girls are undergoing surgery today. Basically, both these women suffer from what we call cardio treacheritis. Cardio meaning heart, of course, and treacheritis meaning, well, <laughs> treacherous. Girls are born with evil, duplicitous hearts. So today, I am going to saw through their breastbones, rip open their rib cages, and surgically remove their beating hearts. I will heal them. Well, how do you heal treacherous hearts, Dr. Beck? Anybody? No? By giving them all the love I possibly can. So, I know he's supposed to be insane and all, but that's just stupid. Melissa's clean heart into Sophie's body because nobody has ever loved me like Melissa. <laughs> and then I will transplant Sophie's clean heart into the garbage. Okay, now let's get started. But apparently Dr. Beck never got that merit badge because Melissa is able to get out of her binds pretty damn easily. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? No, you're not sorry. And you made that quite obvious. Sophie forced me to betray you, I swear. No, she didn't. No, I just, I want to make love to you again. I don't know. I think getting your heart sought out would be the more pleasant option. You can take me to the bedroom and love me like you used to. I will. Thank you. After the surgery. Dr. Beck uses his expert perv senses to sniff Melissa out. <laughs> I know who you are, Melissa. Pretty creepy, huh? But to his dismay, the old pervert winds up staring down the barrel of a boomstick. By the time the police show up, Dr. Beck has fled once again like a perv in the night. We then cut to the two Alberts, wandering the back roads of America, Dumb and Dumber style. I still think it could have worked out. <laughs> Stop the car. He has to take an imaginary piss. These girls are totally wrong for you, man. I don't think so. I think they're just, you know, inexperienced. Maybe another good whack in the head will sort him out. Listen, listen, look, listen. Once they allow themselves, you know, to get to know me, they'll fall in love with me. I know they will. What the hell does it take, man? How many times do you need to go through this? How many more sequels is it going to take? I'm just talking young girls. All oh, women, smug face. Yeah, I'd say his approval ratings with that demographic are pretty low. Yeah. 
So do yourself a favor. In fact, do us all a favor. Buy yourself a beach house in Costa Rica and live out the rest of your days alone. You feel me? Alone. A-L-O-N-E. Wait, so you're saying I should live alone? I don't know if I can do that. I know it's a lousy retirement plan. But you have to do it, buddy. You have to. No! No! Eric Roberts has this argument with his agent all the time. Oh, no! Oh! I'm leaving you here. I'm done with you. And if you think for one millisecond that I'm taking you to the Olive Garden, you've got another thing coming, buddy. My baby's out there, and I'm gonna find her. Sure you will, bud. Well, guys, that about wraps it up for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this nonsense as much as I did, because we got two more of these to get through. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guilty perverts next time. You're